Hi guys, welcome back for another Teach Me In 10 video. Teach Me In 10 is the video series that is brought to you by LabTube, which is part of the Technology Networks Group. My name is Molly and I'm a senior writer for Technology Networks. Our Teach Me In 10 video series invites scientists to join us and talk us through a scientific research area or a scientific concept in less than 10 minutes, making science as accessible as possible for you. If you enjoy the topic of the Teach Me In 10 video, you can check out the further reading listed in the video description below. This week, our guest is Professor Jamie Woodward from the University of Manchester. He's going to be talking to us about microplastics. Over to you, Jamie. Thank you, Molly. I'm delighted to be able to talk about our research in the Department of Geography at the University of Manchester on microplastics in UK rivers. My talk is about microplastics in rivers, um, looking at contamination patterns in UK rivers and working out the transfer of microplastics from the city to the sea, but also thinking about what the presence of microplastics in river systems means. Back in 2015, uh, a group of us in the Department of Geography at Manchester um, started to think about microplastics in rivers. Up to that point, most of the science on microplastics had focused very much on the oceans, very little work on river catchments. So we decided to look at all the rivers around Greater Manchester, and we identified 40 field sites in rural areas, in suburban areas, and right in the bright lights of Manchester city centre. And this is still one of the largest surveys of microplastic contamination anywhere in the world. We wanted to understand patterns of microplastic contamination, and we wanted to see if we could estimate to what extent these microplastics were being transferred downstream to the ocean. Now, in 2015, um, we plotted up this map and we discovered that UK riverbeds were contaminated with microplastics. So if you look at this map on the left-hand side, you can see this is Greater Manchester here, this is the River Irwell system to the north, and the River Mersey to the south. We found that in rural areas, microplastic concentrations were quite low, but we found microplastics at 39 out of 40 sites. When you get down into the urban and the suburban areas, we found very high concentrations of microplastics, what we call microplastic hotspots. And these often have very different assemblages. We found microplastic fragments shown here in pink. We see microbeads shown in green. We see fibers and then other things like glitter and, and foam and film. And this photograph on the right hand side is a typical assemblage of microplastics that we see on channel beds. And you can see microbeads here and fibres and fragments. We get a full mixture of microplastic types. So why is this research important? Well, discovering that riverbeds were contaminated with microplastics has significant ecological implications. If your riverbed is contaminated with microplastics, those creatures that reproduce or live or feed on the riverbed, whether you're a swan or a fish, are much, have much greater propensity to ingest those microplastics for those microplastics to get into the food chain. So that's why this research is important. And that was one of our initial concerns. Now in 2016, um, over the winter period of 1516, we had extensive flooding in the Northwest of England and we resampled all the sites and we discovered uh, another process. We discovered that the floods will actually flush these microplastics from the riverbeds and wash them downstream. So the channel beds will actually clean themselves. Now, after that project and we published that work, we started thinking about, well, where are these microplastics coming from? Um, and we know that if microplastics are easily transported under flood flows or high flows, how did the river channel beds become so heavily contaminated in the first place? So it's well known that urban wastewater is full of microplastics. Microplastics come from domestic sources, from road runoff, um, from, from industry, from trade effluents, possibly also from agriculture. But all of this runoff in this wastewater should make its way to a wastewater treatment works. And it's known in the literature that effective wastewater treatment can remove 99% of the microplastic load. So wastewater treatment is actually very effective at removing the microplastics. So once those, that wastewater is treated, nice clean water is returned to the river system to preserve the quality of the aquatic system. But there's a big scandal in the UK at the moment about water companies discharging sewage, large amounts of sewage into river systems and into our coastal environments. So that blue arrow is actually very often a brown arrow. Now, we designed an experiment 
um, in 2019 to, to try and work out where these microplastics are coming from and under what conditions river channel beds could become heavily contaminated. So after a big flood in the summer of 2019, we sampled a river system. This is the River Tame in, in quite, de quite a lot of detail. And basically we found rural areas have low microplastic concentrations on the channel beds. But when you get in the urban environment, we found very high concentrations, lots of hot spots. So downstream of wastewater treatment works and downstream of outfalls. And these locations have very distinctive and different microplastic assemblages. And that tells us they're coming from point sources. There isn't much mixing downstream. These basically reflect the, the microplastic assemblage in the wastewater entering those rivers. And it shows that contamination of the riverbeds can happen very quickly after flood events has washed the previous microplastics away. We found that treated wastewater has low concentrations of fibres. So these are water samples at the same locations with low concentrations of microplastics. But on the channel beds in the urban environment, we found concentrations up to 130, 140,000 microplastic particles for every kilogram of sediments, so very high concentrations on the channel bed. And these were the full assemblage of microplastics. So we were able to establish that untreated wastewater being discharged into rivers at low flow is the only explanation for these very high concentrations of microplastics accumulating on the channel bed. Because untreated wastewater is allowed to be discharged under exceptional rainfall conditions when you have high flows. But of course, we know that washes microplastics away. So we published this paper in Nature Sustainability in 2021. And the title there sums up that conclusion. Acute riverine microplastic contamination due to avoidable releases of untreated wastewater. And we were basically showing that untreated wastewater laced with microplastics and raw sewage is routinely discharged into UK rivers that are too low to disperse the microplastics downstream. Now this generated a lot of media attention. Last summer, there was a big debate about the sewage scandal, but this work at Manchester linked the sewage scandal with the microplastic problem for the first time. They were one and the same. So treating wastewater tackles the sewage problem. It also tackles the microplastic problem. <laughs> My, my Lord, first of all, I'd like to thank the Minister for bringing forward the amendments he has and for his commitment to review Schedule 3. That was something that I asked for in committee, and I'm delighted that he's uh, going to do that. The, the new point that I want to ask is, has he been briefed on the latest research from the University of Manchester that has demonstrated a direct link between poor wastewater management and high levels of microplastic pollution in the United Kingdom. What is clearly happening is when we have these overflows, the microplastics are going out into the, the uh, water system and not into the rivers, but into the sea. So we're actually negating a whole lot of good that the government have been trying to do in reducing microplastics. So we're just making, if this was not a bad situation before, my lords, it is now a really bad situation. So that was just one example of our work being cited in Parliament. So that was in the House of Lords when the new Environment Act uh, was going through the, the, the House of Commons in autumn of 2021. At the same time, um, this is Philip Dunn here, who's the chair of the Environment Audit Committee of Westminster. He chaired a, a major investigation into water quality uh, in rivers across England. Uh, we gave evidence to that committee. We gave written evidence and we gave, I did a field demonstration um, in, the, in Oxford in the River Windrush catchment last July. So the timing of this work was really important because there's a big debate going on about the behaviour of the water companies in the UK and the discharge of sewage. And our work on microplastics was adding to that um, story by demonstrating in a very distinctive way that um, wastewater practice across the UK uh, was inappropriate and untreated wastewater was routinely being discharged along with sewage into river systems. And that was the only way we, you could account for the very high concentrations of microplastics we found on the stream beds. And there's a whole series of, of um, investigations going on at the moment. The water companies have been investigated by the regulator and also by the Environment Agency for their behavior. And now, because this has been going on for so long, the new Office of Environmental Protection are actually investigating the regulator and the Environment Agency because they have failed to tackle the behavior of the water companies. So this is a local political spat uh, in the UK, and it's a good example of how science is feeding into policy. But this is much more of a, than a UK problem. This is a global issue. And some recent work published in Nature Scientific Reports has shown that the Arctic is now contaminated with microplastics. Many microplastics are coming from rivers in Northeast North America and from Northwest Europe. They're being transported by 
ocean currents to the north and, and formerly pristine environments are now contaminated with microplastics. Urban wastewater is full of microplastics and microplastics from rivers in Europe and North America are transported northwards via these ocean currents. The key message of this science and the key message of this research we've done at Manchester is treating wastewater in towns and cities, wherever they might be, is vital to keeping microplastics out of rivers and also vital to keeping microplastics out of the marine environment. And here's a few pictures of the team who've helped us with this research in the Department of Geography at Manchester. If anybody would like copies of the papers that we've published on microplastics in rivers, just email me at the University of Manchester and I'd be very happy to send copies along. A big thank you to Professor Jamie Woodward for joining us here at Teach Me in 10. We hope you enjoyed the video as much as we did. If you'd like to learn more about microplastics, please do make sure you check out the video description listed below. We'll be back next week for another instalment of Teach Me in 10. If you can't wait until then, be sure to check out our LabTube channel where you can find all of the videos that we have published so far. Take care and see you next week.